I know you so well because we've been best friends for like, at this point, like 20 years. 20 years? Right. Yeah. Like, like we used to kiss each other. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say that. Hi guys, it's me P and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you haven't stumbled across my channel before, my name is Persis Abraham and I talk about LGBTQ issues and thoughts and topics and I'm based in Toronto. I am here with my best friend, childhood best friend, Aww. the coolest person ever, Kaylin. My heart. You're actually the coolest person ever. I can be second coolest. <laughs> no, like I just think it's cool how like we've gone through so much together from senior kindergarten. Yep. Till both of us being 25 now. Someone actually DM'd me and they were saying they really wanted me to talk about internalized homophobia because they don't know too much about it, but they definitely feel like they've experienced it in some way or another. I never thought about internalized homophobia much until they actually brought it up to me. And I was like okay. doing a little research on it and thinking, mm -hmm. wow, this is so real. And I actually feel yeah. like I've experienced that through my coming out journey without even realizing it. Yeah, yeah. And both Kaylin and I grew up in a small town in Ontario. We both went to school elementary school and high school in a Catholic school system. There's so many things where I don't think we realized growing up as teenagers or like preteens or whatever, mm -hmm. that I actually think like kind of affected the way I perceived the world without so, even like- you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, you're so right. I didn't realize how sheltered I was until I branched out and left. I, it was like culture shock. So for those of you who don't know what internalized homophobia is, it happens when LGBTQIA individuals are subjected to society's negative perceptions, intolerance, and stigmas towards the community. And as a result, turn those ideas inward, believing those are true. There's different forms of it too, also within the community, with people who are LGBTQ, like bringing other people down. Like, I think that can go into like biphobia. At least I've related to this being feminine or being a more femme presenting queer woman. I've always kind of felt like I didn't look gay enough, things like that. And I think it's important to note too with internalized homophobia, like you, it's not like you're outwardly homophobic and you're consciously like thinking those things. It's almost like it's just, you. it causes you to have all these like repressions, you know, like you repress these feelings because you think it's wrong, but you don't even realize you're necessarily doing that, right? Oh my God, no. And I think like that is something that really hit home for me because I was repressing feelings for women without even realizing it. Like, I don't know, Kayla, I always think about this specifically because when um, we were watching a shot at Love with Tina. <laughs> I, I was waiting for this story to come up. <laughs> and it's I, a perfect example, it really is. Kayla and I were watching a shot at Love of with Tila Tequila, which was that bisexual dating show with men and women competing for Tila's love. Mm -hmm. And Kaylin and I were like 12, like secretly trying to watch that show because- We weren't even allowed to watch it. No, although weren't we allowed at your house? I remember we got into a fight one time about where to watch the show. No, I don't think so. Cause I remember I always used to have two tabs open on the window and I would have the Hills, which was also on MTV.ca. And then I would have Tila Tequila on, on another tab. So if my parents ever walked in, I can just quickly switch the tab. <laughs> they, if they were like, what are you watching? We would always, always go to the Hills. We were watching the show and Kaylin actually brought up, oh, I think it's really cool how Tila can be, can be in love with like a man and a woman. And then you kind of brought it upon yourself, which I thought was super cool being like 12 years old. You were like, yeah, like who knows what I would be into? You're like, I don't know. Like maybe I could fall in love with a woman. Maybe I'll fall in love with a man. And then I was like, that's cool, Kaylin. But I was like, for me, hell no. Like I only like boys. I could never be in love with a woman. I, I specifically said I would never be in love with a girl or something. I remember, I remember like questioning you on that and, and being like, well, how do you know? <laughs> and you were like, I just know, I just know. And I think you truly believed that at the time too, which there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, but I, I remember feeling embarrassed because I, I was questioning you definitely not because 
of anything to do with you. I was questioning you because I felt like, oh God, am I weird? Like, because when I watched Tila Tequila, that was definitely the first experience where I was like, okay, yeah, I could definitely like, I, that could be me. When I disclosed that to you, like my best friend, and you said like, oh no, definitely not for me. Like you didn't judge me or anything, but I was, I was then like, okay, maybe this is something that's a little unusual. So I kind of, I think after that point, I may have just like kept it to myself more, um, which is not your fault or my fault or anything, but it just goes to show like how um, deep down the homophobia is. And I wanna go back to the fear that we felt when we were watching this. Do you think that that has to do with internalized homophobia as well? Like, why were we so scared? Like. If we were watching The Bachelor, like ABC's The Bachelor, would we have felt the same fear? Tila Tequila was like, a, I would say it was a pretty like raunchy show. You know what I mean? Like it was, yeah. It was definitely like <laughs> not PG at all times. Take The Bachelorette, but like make it a little more like sexual. So I'm wondering if maybe I was more nervous about the sexual aspect more so than like mm -hmm. seeing gay relationships portrayed on TV. Yeah, that's fair. But on another note, how you say said that Tila Tequila was very sexualized, do you think that has something to do with um, the fact that oftentimes bisexuality and femme lesbians must be portrayed in that light in order to be um, appealing and to attract viewers? Like, do you think that had to do with uh, why Tila Tequila was so raunchy and sexualized? I really do believe that, yeah. yeah. To me, the whole thing felt very sexualized. And I think like I, what I realized later was that I just want to see these relationships being portrayed between two women. Yeah. In like a real like romantic way. And I, I don't know if I sound wrong by saying this because I know, I mean, during the show, she was like really saying, I'm falling in love with this woman. She was very open about being like, I'm in love with Bobby <laughs> and I'm in love with Danny, like example. Yeah. So, yeah. but I, I, I do feel like in the way the show, taking away from how Tila felt or whatever, I think the show definitely painted these women to be very sexualized. Yeah, I think so too. Obviously I never was like a homophobic person ever thinking like gay people are wrong, like yeah. it isn't right. I was just obviously dealing with a lot of internal feelings mm -hmm. and confusion, but I think the and when I was dealing with internalized homophobia as a teen, I would always kind of say too, like I can appreciate a woman and think she's really attractive and want to hook up with her, but I would never feel emotionally attracted to women because I think from a society perspective, I think it was normalized for me to think women can make out with women, women can sleep with women, cool. But when it comes to relationships, I would be with a man. Yeah, and I was gonna bring that up for this video too when you first told me about the topic because I remember distinctly, I said it too, like when we got to a certain age that we were um, starting to have like crushes and, and love interests and actually um, act on them, like ki kiss, have our first kisses and have our first like flings or whatever. Um, I used to always say as well, oh yeah, you know, I could hook up with a woman, like I, I find women attractive, but I would never be in a relationship with a woman. Like that's just, that's where I draw the line. You know, I was like, I could, I could <laughs> make out with them. I could, I could be friends with them. I could develop a friendship connection, but no, I draw the line. I, I couldn't be in a relationship. <laughs> And looking back, it's so silly, but but that like is a perfect example of how internalized it was. Like I consciously believed that I wouldn't fall in love with a woman. I was never really exposed to um, girl on girl relationships. I never had a role model that was um, like a lesbian and was just genuinely in love with another woman. It was always oh yeah, so-and-so hooked up with so-and-so, you know? Yeah, and back to that too, with like maybe having a role model. I can't remember having anyone who was openly a lesbian or openly queer, who I identified with because I feel like no one looked like me. There was, during our times, I think, because it's definitely evolved with people coming out in the media, but I don't know, we had like Ellen DeGeneres yeah. and Rosie O'Donnell 
Mm. I was very scared of the word lesbian or to ever say like, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian, yeah. Oh my God, like that terrified me. Yeah. And it's like, why? I know, and I, I think the reason why is um, there may have been celebrities that came out as bisexual, but I don't know, if you had a different experience, you can uh, let me know for sure, but when I heard about bisexual um, actresses who were maybe more femme presenting, I found that the media still kind of focused more so on their heterosexual relationships. Like, I feel like someone would come out as bisexual and they would maybe have a fling with a girl and then they would go back to, the media would go back to focusing on their heterosexual relationships. And I think um, that probably has something to do with why you maybe feared the word lesbian because it was like, okay, bisexual is starting to be a little bit more mainstream in the media, but I, I can't think of like a femme lesbian really that I heard of when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I always think of Angelina Jolie. Okay, yeah. Because she, she's someone who I, one, I have a massive crush on her, but two, <laughs> she was always very open about um, her sexuality and being bi. And uh, I, I identified with her more, just in terms of she's a more like femme presenting woman. I know she definitely has like, I don't even know if she would identify as femme, who knows? Because she does have some mask energy as well. People, I mean, I always just knew her to date men. So she had a fling with a woman, but we were only focused on her marriage to Brad Pitt. Right, yeah. And that's fine, she's bisexual. Yeah, I think that's kind of where my internalized homophobia stood. I think I was always like, maybe that's how I feel. And I, I never even like wanted to allow myself to ever think like, I'm gonna be with a, I wanna be with a woman. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not only I want to be with a woman, but even like, I will end up with a woman, yes. you know? I think that um, just the media in general, it, it affects us so much more than we think it does. And with your example of Angelina Jolie, like, I don't, I feel like people wouldn't even maybe know that she uh, presents as bisexual, like maybe if you weren't in this community, because it's just, it's not focused on. And then I think even when, it is, people unfortunately might think, oh, well, yeah, she says she's bisexual, but she's like with a man or she's been with a man. So like, it's probably just for attention or she doesn't really know, she's just curious or whatever. And I hate that. Whatever you say you are, that is you. And I believe you. And yeah, I, I would hate for anyone to ever question someone because yeah, if they're bisexual and they're dating men, like, who am I to say like, oh, she's just, she's never gonna date a woman. Like, yeah, like how, how do you know if you've never been with a woman? And it's like, if, if a teenager says to you, I'm, I'm attracted to men, I like men, I'm heterosexual. Do people say, oh, well, you don't know for sure because you've never been with a man. Nobody says that. And it's frustrating that when it's the other way around, people question it. Um, or maybe don't take you as seriously. And I know that's something that I feel like I've experienced and I, I judged myself as well because I've been in a heterosexual relationship since I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. um, shout out Alex, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but I feel like that makes me question myself sometimes and I think that's internalized homophobia in me because I'm like, well, do I like women? But then talking about um, our childhood, I was having those thoughts when I was 13 and watching Tila Tequila. Like I know myself and I don't put labels on myself. Yeah. But I, I still feel like I don't have a place in the community sometimes just because of everything that we just talked about in the media. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. And I feel like you even saying like, maybe I don't feel like I have a place in the community because I've been in a heterosexual relationship for so many years. Mm -hmm. Like, I I just hope you know, like you do have a place in the community. <laughs> I, know, I know I do, yeah. And here, I've, all of my friends and family and everyone in my life is very supportive. And yeah. I it's just, it's that's like a passing thought that has occurred sometimes. And I think everybody probably thinks that as well. So I kind of want to bring it back to us growing up in a Catholic school board. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if you remember this specifically, because to be honest, I don't remember a lot of like our religion classes or what we were <laughs> maybe necessarily taught. Yeah, but me neither. Were we ever taught being gay was wrong? I actually remember one time in high school, I think it was grade 11 religion. I was in class and I had a really great religion teacher. He was teaching um, 
what the Bible says and kind of what Catholic, um, the Catholic beliefs are. And he was on the subject of gay relationships. And I remember him struggling. I, I thought he was struggling. He looked like he was because he w didn't want to obviously offend someone or say the wrong thing. And like, he was probably aware of the fact that he was in a room of 30 kids who, who are figuring out their sexuality. And he was very careful with his words. And he said, the Bible teaches this, but like, you don't have to believe that. Like he was, he was very much like, this isn't what I believe. And this isn't what you have to believe, but I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. I like that he made this differentiation. Um, but I do remember after that, uh, when he went on to say, of course, like gay relationships aren't encouraged in, um, the Catholic Bible, somebody did get up and actually leave the class because he was, wow. he was obviously very hurt and, you know, understandably so, of course. And I hope that things have changed now, like as, as progressive as that was at the time, because there were religion teachers that I heard stories of saying like, absolutely not. This is not okay. Like you're going to hell or whatever the case is. I didn't experience that. But um, I hope that now it's even more progressed from that point because it obviously was still hurtful at the time. We're very lucky in the sense like, you know, I think our group of friends growing up in high school, I, we never experienced like homophobia. I don't think at all. No really yeah even when i would say like i could be attracted to a woman and i i would hook up with a woman no one was ever like you <laughs> like everyone was like you do you you do you and like we used to kiss each other <laughs> <laughs> i was just gonna say that like our group of friends i kissed way more girls in high school than i kissed boys and same funny enough the 12 year old who was like oh no i can only be into boys I think I carried that a little bit with me for more years than like mm -hmm. I should have because um, I was like really putting myself down when like no one else was doing that to me. I think we are our own biggest critics, not only with this, but with a lot of things. And I, I would second that I feel really lucky that I grew up in a really accepting environment, even though um, we lived in like a smaller town that wasn't really as progressive and even though I went to a Catholic school I always felt accepted. I, I, it's sad because I think that where we're from it kind of held us back a little bit you know like with our development I think if we had more representation back then um, there wouldn't be so much internalized homophobia. How did how do you deal with internalized homophobia? Oh that is a good question. Um, well, I think that internalized homophobia is something that is so deep within all of us. I think everybody has it to an extent or even to the tiniest fraction because of society. I think it's unavoidable in our childhood and our development and in our deep subconscious, even if we don't believe it consciously. So I think that just um, challenging yourself all the time you know, and your like subliminal beliefs and your actions and your feelings, just developing that self-awareness because otherwise you're never gonna, you're never gonna get to the, get to it at the core. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has these beliefs and everybody has these problems and makes mistakes. But at the end of the day, we can overcome them if we continue to grow. That is really good advice. Um because working on ourselves, I don't think a lot of people do that. Journaling is great. Practicing gratitude, you know, reaching out to your supports. And I've been practicing unlearning, like the okay. the state of unlearning where you wake up every day, mm -hmm. not like having any judgments, no judgments about anyone, anything. And you try mm -hmm. to like, so you're almost like unlearning what a societal norm is. Yeah, and I think like if you can, obviously this isn't um, an option for everyone, but even just telling a close friend or someone you trust, confiding in them and opening up to them, I think that would do wonders. And always give yourself grace.
Yeah, I think that would have been helpful for me too, at least when I was coming to terms with myself, because I think I was very open with you guys about how I felt, but I, I was still dealing with the internalized homophobia of possibly maybe only being into women. Mm -hmm. For some reason to me, I like couldn't get there. Look at how far you've come though. Well, it's, it's refreshing because I feel like, I mean, I'm 25, but I feel like, you know, there's people who hold on to these like feelings and repressing these feelings for yeah. years, maybe sometimes not ever even coming out, you know, or unfortunately not. Yeah. I think you've also done so much self-reflection despite being in a very long-term like hetero relationship, but you also know yourself so well. And I admire that you've like, you're not afraid to talk about your like attraction for women too. And you've always been open about that. And you've always said like, listen, that doesn't change. The fact that I'm in a relationship with a man doesn't change how I identify. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah. important. Well, it has been a process. We did. We went on our own journey. You went on your own journey. And I think you've come a, a long way and you've done a fine job. Thanks. <laughs> no problem. No, thank you. Obviously the same to you. And you've always been such an outlet for me or even like for me to come and talk to you and feel like I am feeling this way about this person or why do I feel the way I do? You've always been welcoming with like no judgments, open arms. And you also put me in my place too, in terms of like, um, <laughs> you know, just maybe okay. like you help me do like a deep anal analysis of myself that maybe I can't do because like my eye blinders on. Sometimes yeah. it just takes someone else to ask certain questions and help you see the light. <laughs> to Jesus. <laughs> as long as he's okay with being gay, <laughs> which I think he is. I hope we touched upon a lot of the topics surrounding internalized homophobia and our experiences as best we can. But mm -hmm. um, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to DM me and let me know. Thank you again to the person who asked me to talk about this because I literally didn't think about it until I was like, damn, this was a huge part of my life mm -hmm. and my growing up, so. And I'm Cla and Kaylin, thank you for talking to me about it. Thank you for having me. Everybody like and subscribe. If you're gonna subscribe to any YouTuber, this girl. Thank you. She's the one. <laughs> and let me know if you wanna see Kaylin in more videos because we can obviously do is another Zoom hang, but hopefully sooner than later, we can actually like get together in person yep. and film a fun video. All right, have a great night, guys. <laughs>